Primavera, rainha das flores, como ela não há outra igual. A primavera vai e volta sempre, a mocidade vai e não volta mais. Just a curiosity, the song was made by my grandfather and it's about spring and youth. So because it's sunny and because we are currently in spring, let's just take a moment to forget all of the bad things that have been happening. March was a very complicated month, at least for me and I'm sure that for some of you also. But there are good things to celebrate and one of those things is that I finally have another book haul to show you guys and I'm thankful for all of these. And so without further ado, I will just show them to you. Hello beautiful bookworms! My name is Katerina and welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be doing, as I previously stated, a book haul. And this book haul has comics, it has mangas, but it also has books! And I am incredibly excited, I love when I do have books to show you guys and I love when I do have things to talk about and yeah, when I get these collections at the end of each month that I can tell you all about it. Please don't acknowledge my hair, I don't know what is going on with he, but let's just proceed into the haul. So the first one that I have here is uh, the issue 4 of the comic uh, Batman and the Joker, the Deadly Duo. However, this is a variant cover by David Mack. Um, it is beautiful. My boyfriend loves this style. I love it too. I think it's really incredible. When I looked at this though, it looked like a Catwoman print or issue or something. It is not. It's actually the Bat Batman and Joker Deadly Duo. So I'm not entirely sure how Catwoman enters into this because I haven't started reading it but I am overly excited to own this one and the art style on the inside is just so fucking great so honestly I have to pick this one up. Then we have issue 4 and issue 5 of the 10,000 Black Fetters. This is uh, a Bone Orchard Mythos kind of worldly thingy series and it's by Jeff Lemire and Andrew Sorrentino and Dave Stewart. Jeff Lemire and Andrew Sorrentino are like one of the best pairings of writer and illustrator in my opinion and I am over the moon excited to read 10,000 Black Fetters. I haven't started it but now that I have five issues I mean I don't know if this is the end or not. Not entirely convinced I don't know but now that I have five issues I think it's the perfect timing to pick this up. I do have to read the prequel for the Bone Orchard Mythos so that I know a little bit about this world they are creating but yeah, I, I really want to pick this up as well. Speaking about issue number five, I have issue number five of The Joker, The Man Who Stopped Laughing, which I also haven't started. So you'll see a pattern here of things that I'm gathering and like will binge probably like next month or something if I can, I don't know. We will see, but very intrigued also for this. The covers are all amazing and it's a Joker story, so what else can I want, actually? Then we have some mangas, and I finally have the belated number that I was waiting for, which is Blood on the Tracks Volume 9 by uh, Suju Oshimi. Finally, like, I had all of the volumes, including number 12. Yeah, including number 12, which was the latest one. I don't know if Volume 13 is already out, but I don't think so. But... The delivery skipped nine <laughs> and you never skip nine and if you're a fan of Doctor Who and understood this reference I love you <laughs> but as I was saying uh, I have Blood on the Tracks which is basically this kind of horror coming of age um, that kind of explores a relationship between uh, a son and a mother an obsessive creepy relationship and I have only read volume 1 of this, but the art style is unique and I know that I'm going to love it. So now that I have 12 volumes, you know, maybe, maybe it could be the time to pick this one up. I don't know. I do want to make like an entirety of a Shuzu Oshimi um, reading, uh, not order specifically, but talking about his thematics and his series because I have pretty much everything he's written. So it's kind of the time. And I've only read one series, <laughs> which is troublesome, but I will. I promise I will. And talking about uh, Shuzu Oshimi, I have another one-shot by him, which is Sweet Pulse Side. 
Um, this is apparently another coming of age story because that's what Shuzo Oshimi does. But it's apparently about this uh, boy that it's it's not developing hairs, you know, in in his chest and his beard, his pubic hairs, and about this girl that actually has too many hairs, um, and they meet and. I don't know if she's going, I think she's going to ask him to help her with her hairs, which m might be a metaphor for growth uh, and being okay with one's own body. Uh, and they meet at a pool, that's why it's called Sweet Poolside. Um, very excited to see what this is about, and it's just a one shot, so yeah, intrigued. Then we have another interesting one, this is by Tatsuki Fujimoto, and it's called Look Back. Um, the story and art is by this author, of course, and uh, it looks like a very beautiful one. Uh, it's apparently a competition of two people that love to draw manga, and it's about some prizes and stuff, and they meet in a competition, I think. And it appears to be, like, I've looked through to see the art, which is amazing, but it appears to be a kind of a sour, sweet story with sadness involved and like a reflection of life i don't know so i'm very excited to pick this one up and read it's also one volume so it's pretty short so yeah then we have weathering with you volume one the story of this is by makoto shinkai and the art is by wataru kubota and uh as everything it's a kind of a manga edition of a makoto shinkai film um i am not sure what this is about Okay, I'm going to read it. It says, During the summer of his first year in high school, a young man named Odaka runs away from home to the bustling city of Tokyo. Alone and exhausted, he decides to kill time in a fast food place where he meets a young woman named Hina who happens to work there. Little does he know that Hina possesses powers that not only affect the weather, but the whole world. In Weathering With You, Makoto Shinkai dives into topics like love and sacrifice to show how far one boy goes to protect the thing he loves most. This manga reveals the backstories and true thoughts of the characters who stole the hearts of fans and critics worldwide. So I haven't seen the movie, um, which apparently is a pattern for me that I want to read the manga before seeing the movie, which is stupid because they came the other way around. However, um, I have all of Makoto Shinkai works in manga, so I had to get this one. This is volume one, so there's more. I don't know if it's just two volumes or more, but I think that I'm going to love it and cry possibly, which is what I do when I read Makoto Shinkai's works. And then finally for the manga department we have Chojin X, which, and this is volume 1 of course, which is the next work by Tokugou creator Suishida. And when I tell you I'm excited but really cautious when I approach this, like the cover is beautiful, the art style on the inside is incredible because it's Suishida. However, the story... I don't know. It says best friends Tokyo and Azuma do everything together, even if most of the time it feels like Tokyo is just stumbling along in Azuma's cooler, more talented footsteps. But when they're attacked one night by a superhuman mutant called a Shoujin, Tokyo finally has its chance to chime by turning into a Shoujin himself. Being a superpowered creature isn't all it's cracked up to be, though. Tokyo has to hide his transformation from his family and dodge a truancy charge at school all the while dealing with the increasingly odd incidents happening around town. This could be fun, or it could be just one of those, you know, uh, daily lives, but with I'm a supernatural creature sort of thing that are funny, but don't have a lot of substance. I am a massive fan of Tokyo Ghoul. I loved Tokyo Ghoul, and I really enjoy Tokyo Ghoul Re up until a certain point. Um, I do know that the author throw in the towel with that one and I understand to a point because there were mental issues involved and uh, exhaustion and everything and I do understand but uh, he created a new series so hopefully he's going to maintain quality and let's hope it's somewhat as deep as Tokyo Ghoul. I don't know just just a school at least um, but I am excited I am just cautionally then for books, the first one that I got uh, that came to me is Price Manor, The House That Bleeds by Jamie Stewart. This is the re-edition of the two first books of Price Manor series. So I had Mike Salt's book appear in another haul, and now Jamie Stewart's book is here. And by the end of March, the third book is going to be released, which is a new book. Um, I have reviewed 
three books in the Price Manor series. However, the third book is no longer a part of that series, and so that's why a new third book will come out by a different author. There were situations uh, involved, and that's why all of these covers are being uh, changed and reprinted and re-edited by a different person. Um, but I still want to support, even though I have the other covers, I want to support the authors and this change of editing and uh, this change of covers, and I want to have all of the Price Manor series in all similar covers. So I'm very excited. I have already read this, but I'll probably reread it if I can at the same time that the third comes out to do a new review with the first three books of the Price Manor series. Another book that I have here is kind of a poetry book in a way. I'm just gonna tell you. It's called You Never Marry Your Muse and it's prose work and supposed poetry. It's Brooklyn Dean writing as Brooklyn Devours. Now, if you don't know Brooklyn Dean or if her name sounds familiar for the people that have been in this channel for a long time, I have done a review on Deification, the first in the anti-gospel series. Um, I will leave a link up above. That's her horror, religious, apocalyptic work. This is supposedly her first soiree into poetry. I am very excited. Brooklyn writes like no one. She has this beautiful, amazing prose and I believe poetry as well. She has beautiful words, like the, all of this magnificent portrayal of writing. And so I'm very excited to just pick this one up and read. It's also pretty short, so it's good for like an afternoon with the rain outside. I I just want to know. I just want to know. I want to feel with her, her poetry and her words and just let it enrapture me because I think that's the best thing to do with poetry. I don't read a lot of poetry though. I do enjoy it. I feel like sometimes I don't have the stomach for it because it brings out a lot of emotions. But for Brooklyn, I am going to try and read her works and get all of that emotion out there. I'm very severely excited for this. And if you haven't read any Brooklyn of Brooklyn's works, I highly recommend because her writing is spectacular. Next four books that I've got this month, we have Tess Garriston, The Sinner. Um, and I don't know if this is like a second book, uh, it says in here, best-selling author of The Surgeon. But what I do know is, is that this is a Rizzoli and Isles book. And if you don't know what Rizzoli and Isles is, you don't watch criminal, CSI-ish, police, uh, detective kind of things. Um, I used to watch some of the episodes, I never watched them like thoroughly from season one to whatever series it ended on. However, I am extremely excited to see the names of the characters and apparently this is going to be gruesome, so it might be great to read. It's kind of like, um, I'm not going to say trashy because I have no idea how the writing is and it could be extremely good, but it's just those trashy, you know, kind of detective books that you're like, I'm just going to read this because I just want a little bit of emotion in my life and I don't want nothing too dense. I just want some gore and murder. You know what I mean? Do you know when you reach that phase in your life that you just want some gore and murder so that your head can finally be at peace because you've listened to so many people and you've done so many things in the day that you just need to watch someone die. And now that I've said it out loud, it's not... I, please, I'm not a serial killer, okay? I'm, I'm okay. I'm a normal human being. I can't hurt a fly to save my life. It's just... You know, sometimes I need this shit to survive. Then we have The Tangle. Uh, this is by Justin Robertson and it's apparently a new release. It's supposed to be a bold and thrilling sci-fi folk horror. I do like folk horror. Sci-fi horror, I love watching movies that are sci-fi horror like Alien, Event Horizon. Those are some of my favorite movies even. However, read sci-fi horror... Mm. So we will see. It kind of says that it's a trans-dimensional trip into the mysterious knot of nature, a journey into the brilliant darkness where the timeless divine spirit of the Tangle weaves its spell and all mankind's hubris is rendered insignificant by the radically non-human force of phantom ecology. Salvation, revelation and a terrible reckoning dwell in the ancient roots. This could be awesome. Except it kind of sounds like a, a little bit pretentious, but I do want to read it before I judge it. Which whoa, it has illustrations. Ooh, it's illustrations of trees. It might be fun. I don't know. 
And then finally, for the last book of February, we have The Hollow Kind by Andy Davidson. If this name sounds at all familiar to you, is the author of The Boatman's Daughter, which I haven't read but heard so much about. So I'm very curious about this. It's supposed to be an exploration of grief. Uh, and somebody said, sips into your subconscious and waits for you in your nightmares, which please do, since I already do have nightmares every night, so maybe a little bit of more poetically beautiful ones would be preferable to the gorish fest that is living in my head at night. So, it says that this is about a woman that is kind of finding a way out of her abusive marriage and she learns that a long-lost grandfather, August Redfern, has wild her his turpent willed her his turpentine estate. So she throws everything into a bag and flees to Georgia with her 11 year old son Max. So she she flees from this marriage. She goes with her child to this estate which is a decrepit farmhouse on a thousand acre of old pine forest. And she's very happy because she's going to have a new start in here. She's finally got away from this relationship. But Max... Um, Ah, it, well, so it takes her a while to notice that things are not as incredible as they seem, and, but Max, he notices shit. He notices cracks and screeches on the walls and scratches and stuff, and he's kind of preoccupied. Uh, he sees that there's something wrong here and he can't do anything about it. And it says, something lurks beneath the soil, ancient and hungry, with the power to corrupt hearts and destroy souls. A kingdom of grief and death, to which Nellie's own blood has granted her the key. So a gripping, achingly atmospheric tale about the horrors that lurk in the dark corners of family history from the acclaimed author of The Boatman's Daughter. I love family horror. I love grief. I love the exploration of all of these triggering themes in a way that we can make peace with them and that the characters can make peace with the things that bring them pain. Um, so I'm very excited to read this. I hope it's good because it's fairly big. It's 459, I think. Yeah. No, okay, no, this is already... Okay. 443, so... Should be good. So that's all going to be... Wow, so that's all going to be... Yay! Okay, let's restart this. So that's going to be all for today. If you guys like this, leave a like and subscribe and tell me in the comments down below if you've read any of these or if you've gotten any of these or want to get some of these just because I got them. Just tell me something. I would love to chat with people that have already read this book when I read them. Like, please don't spoil me because I haven't read almost any of the books that I've hauled. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's going to be all for today and happy readings to you all. Bye!